Hey everybody, today is February 26, 2021 and this is the second update to my grow series. So uh, a while ago, I think three weeks ago, I started some seedlings or attempted to start some seedlings inside these uh, um, pods here and the weather in my garage was so cold that the seedlings took forever to come up. So it's been three weeks now and only a few plants sprouted you see so those two and then this two here so this is the houston white tie and that's the kangsta yellow so the rest of them are still down there somewhere and hopefully they will sprout so i decided to uh, do something different because seeds do need a lot of uh, moisture and warmth to to sprout so I put them in these dome here. This is a salad container to go. And if you put them in little mini cups like this, just cut the bottom out so that water can escape. And then put them in here and put like three seeds in there. And then you can close them like this. And this would, uh, will keep the heat in there, keep them really nice and warm. And also with, it, with these sitting in your tent, it makes it even warmer so in here it's probably 75 degrees Fahrenheit and within seven days this is what I've got already you see so these sprout very very quick so I see I got that one there that one there that one there what is this I have names for them uh, the sweet Linzo okay today is March 2021 and everything is looking good all of my seedlings uh, have popped out of the soil so uh, we are in business so these here these row here were the ones that I started really early on uh, February 3rd and that's a month ago <laughs> and uh, because of the cold weather and all that stuff the, the you know it took a, a while for these guys to come out it took like probably four weeks or, or three and a half weeks before they started to pop out of the soil because it was so cold with the the crazy storm we had and uh, you can see every uh, varieties that I have here have sprouted something lemon starburst over there we have peach star kissed here see there's some over there and uh, scarlet rose those are the three cousins and then the kangsta yellow this is a beautiful variety here uh, peach pumpkins they all popped out of the uh, the soil and then I have uh, the KS white tie I'm so surprised that this white tie there's only one that popped uh, usually those are uh, those popped up first and uh, they sprout really easily maybe I've used some really old seeds and here is the Houston white tie and look at how many we have popped out okay so these here are the ones that I started later I started this on the 13th and uh, which is 10 days after these guys and look at these and the reason they uh, started faster was because of course the weather was warmer but also because I used the, this little uh, dome here and I closed it like that and that helped uh, speed up the, 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 the germination process and then once they germinate it um, I take the seedlings here you want to separate them as soon as possible because at this stage here there's only one strand of root and it grows right straight down straight so it's very easy to remove so if you wait longer they're going to tangle up and then when you separate them you may damage the root and may kill a plant or you may even set them back so you, you don't want to do that so you want to separate them at this stage right here is the best time to do that so I, I would take these out and I put them in here and then you know whatever grow the best those are the ones that I keep for outside usually when they grow like this they all grow well and uh, so I give uh, the extras to my local friends so um, I usually have a buddy here that grow a lot of these varieties so I always call him up every year to uh, to give him all of the extras okay so today we are going to transplant these here into the larger pots and guys, I have not had any fungus gnats yet this year. And uh, I'm considering myself lucky because this time of the year is when I start to open the tent and also open the garage. And then of course, fungus gnats fly in, one or two of them, and then they, I'll have like uh, hundreds uh, 
But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter because um, uh, you know it's warmer now, so I'm gonna have to uh, start maybe moving these outside very soon. So it doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, no fungus nest so far. So uh, the uh, the thing to that is um, make sure you use the type of soil that that you know potentially doesn't carry fungus nets. And the one that I find that works really well for me over the years is this here, the Pro Mix right here. And uh, because you see how these are enclosed and all that stuff, there's no uh, openings like these other ones where they they, uh, they they leave outside that has holes. And when they have holes, the fungus gnats can get in there, you know, when they're laying at the stores. And then when you bring home, you get you bring the eggs with you and then uh, they'll spread everywhere. So buy the kind of bags that sort of like, you know, has no damages. Okay, we have my Brazilian starfish. And I love this variety because it tastes super good. Very nice and sweet with a little kick, which is not much at all, but it's a beautiful variety that tastes amazing. So if you guys haven't grown Brazilian starfish, consider looking up and adding that to your, to your grow list because it's amazing. So very easy. You can just squeeze the container. You see, they separate like that. So that, that's the reason why you should uh, separate them at this age. Because they're very simple and you're not going to damage anything. Just like so. If you wait too long, the roots may get tangled up with the other plants. And then when you pull them out, you may damage the root and that'll set your plant back a little bit. I'm just going to plant all of them. I don't need all of them. But, um... Always good to have, you know, two or three plants so that way you can pick the best out of them and plant them. There you go. And then just give it some water. So give it a thorough water and then these pots have holes so the, the excess water would drain right through. Okay, here are some of the plants that I have outside sitting under the sun. Uh, this here is my newest Lingria. So I took seeds from uh, the plant last year and that's that's what is growing out of that. And here is my newest cross here. I'm waiting for it to change color. So the review will be coming up very soon. And here are two of the also Lingria, the same thing as the one you just saw. And you can see there's already uh, a lot of flowers on these already. So. Um, because I grew these in small containers like those red solo cups and they're already fruiting so they're not going to grow as big so they may stay this size or maybe grow just a slight bit but they won't get to the full size uh, what I could do is I could trim and pluck it all off and then that would help the plant to uh, kind of like start over but I, I really want fruits for those so I'm going to leave it that way and since I have two I, I wanted to keep these guys a little small. Okay, and here is my chocolate star scream, the sweet one, crossed with Lingria. I, I did a video on this recently, so I will link you guys. Uh, you, you see here, after I transplanted outside, I, I chopped everything off. I, I want this plant to start over because it fruited already, so I got a bunch of fruits off of this already, and I got seeds for the next season, so um, I, I want it to grow uh, a lot more so um, that's the reason why I chopped it so much so there's really not much left of that plant but uh, in the next few updates you're gonna see that these guys this guy will grow like crazy and here is a habanero plant that I bought from Lowe's I just transplanted out here and uh, you know sometimes when you you go to Lowe's and pick plants I usually pick ones uh, with uh, multiple plants in the, in the single pot. That way I can separate them and get two plants. So uh, try to do that as well. I mean, um, buy them early because then they'll have a lot of time to grow. And buy one that has, um, you know, multiple plants. That way you get two plants for the price of one. Even if they're small, it's fine. And then I also purchased this one here. This is a Thai chili. So um, I'm going to see how, how good this one is. Uh, I don't really know uh, anything about it. I just like the way it looks in the picture. So um, that's why I bought it. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do some Q&A before we wrap up this uh, second episode. Okay, we are going to end with some questions. Uh, these are the most common questions that I get asked very often when people are starting out seedlings. So uh, I've gathered 10 here, so we're going to go through it. Uh, I'm going to put the timeline so uh, you guys can follow that as well uh, in the description. Uh, what is the best method for starting pepper seeds? Um, for me, the best method and easiest it would be just drop it in soil, put a dome on top. Uh, that will help you know, generate some heat and they will sprout very quickly that way. Uh, you can do it in paper towel method as well. Uh, but the thing with paper towel is uh, after they sprout it, then you're going to have to move it out, you know, take it out and put it in, into soil. So it's like an additional step. So the best way for me is just put it into a cup and put a dome on top to, uh, to help with the heat. Okay, so number two, what is the best time to begin putting seeds in the soil? Um, it depends, but usually I would suggest starting your seeds two to three months before you're able to take it outside. That way, uh, you know, you get a nice size plant and then when you take it outside, it's almost ready to go and it will start taking off and it would fruit very fast. And that will help people that have short growing season as well. So usually as soon as the weather goes uh, above 55 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, somewhere around there you can start uh, your seeds. But the, for me, it's uh, two to three months before you take it outside. Um, because uh, if you live in climate similar to mine, like zone 8A, if you take it outside bef uh, two or three months before, uh, the plant actually would, would give you, uh, if you have a long season, it will give you two productions. Um, like one in around June and July, and then one at the end of the season. So sometimes I do that just to get um, more production out of my peppers. Okay, uh, how long do seeds take to sprout and do some varieties sprout faster than others? Uh, yes, as some varieties do sprout faster than others. Uh, like the Thai varieties and stuff like that, they do sprout faster than the super hots. But also seeds that are uh, new, like say they're six months old, uh, usually they'll take between seven to ten days to sprout. Uh, if seeds that are older than that, like a year to two years, they may take a little bit longer. So if you have fresh seeds uh, from the prior season, those are the best. They will sprout in seven to ten days, uh, usually. Uh, you may get some that would take three weeks. Uh, like the one I just showed you in the beginning of the video, it took probably three weeks because it was so cold. So uh, temperature, um, the age of the seeds, and also the type, uh, of, like the variety, uh, will, will determine how fast they sprout. Number four, uh, uh, some of the seedlings I have could not break through the casing. Like they have a helmet on top, I think that's what they're saying. What do I do? Um, uh, the helmet head, usually they call it helmet head, uh, usually those are either the weak seeds, uh, usually they just can't break open from the shell because they're weak. But also, uh, to help prevent that, you want the soil to be really nice and moistened before you put the seeds in. And also, when you put the seeds in, put it to around half an inch to an inch below the soil. Because what happened is, if you put it like so close to the surface, the seeds will sprout the root and it'll push the, seed, the, the, the shell out of the soil so quickly and it dries up and when the shell dries it'll be very tough for the seeds to break through because it come, becomes very very hard. So uh, you know use moistened soil and put it uh, further the seed a little bit further like an inch uh, deep into the soil that will help because the soil with the, with, with the moisture it will soften the seed and so when the seeds sprout, it, it can break through and break through and it, it'll take a little bit time before it break the surface and by then the casing will come off already. So that's one way to help reduce uh, getting helmet heads. But sometimes if you get helmet head, you can actually get a, a, a scissor, a fine point scissor and cut around the shell. If you don't damage the middle part, 
the plant will live. If you cut the middle part, that's it for the plant. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, preventing it is a good, uh, good idea. But if you already get the helmet head, then you can try to break through by cutting around uh, the layer and try to break it open. But if there, if if like the leaf is already hanging out and the the shell is just hanging onto the leaf, you can just pinch part of the leaf. As long as you don't damage the center, your your seedling would be fine. Uh, why are my seedling turning yellow and not growing? Uh, this one here is normally due to too much water. So you can. Uh, you can tell when your container has too much water. You can actually see the water. Uh, a good um, type of soil you should use is something that would keep the moisture in, but also allows water to drain through. Um, seed starting mix are great. So uh, remember, seeds, they don't need that much water to sprout. You know, give it a thorough water, allow the water to drain, put the seeds in, and they don't need water until probably a few weeks after they sprout unless you know your tent is super hot and it evaporates and it dries quickly but you can you can tell um, if you if you you know use a spoon and lift part of the soil and you you can see the water that that's too much so make sure the soil is just nicely moistened but not super wet and uh, because super wet it will prevent the roots from growing it'll damage and burn the root also and it, it sometimes will kill your plant. Uh, the first sign, it, it will turn yellow. And then for weeks and weeks, it just won't grow. That's because that's the problem. So uh, don't water too much. Okay, um, when do I begin to feed my seedlings? You don't really need to feed your seedlings because uh, um, it'll take a while before you actually need to feed the seedlings. Uh, like when it gets to like four, four leaves like a good size like two inches that's when you can start feeding them but don't feed your seedling right away as soon as they sprout out you know they, they only have the cotyledon or just cotyledon and then two sets of leaves that's too early so you don't really need to feed them uh, it also depends on the soil you're using uh, some soil could have already have um, you know fertilized in there so if you feed extra you're gonna burn your plant and it, it'll it'll just die so um just don't feed them until you know they grow around two inches and um, four sets of leaves. That's usually the good a good time. But if if you're unsure, just you know give it a little bit of um, like worm casting or something like that, just to be safe. Uh, and if you um, use fertilizer and you don't know how much to use, just put those uh, slow release pebbles. That way. You know the the fertilizer releases slowly, and you can't really burn your your, your seeds. So uh, it for pepper seedlings, it's best to go less with the fertilizer than to go more. So that that's usually how I go with it. But yeah, you don't need to feed your seedlings for a, for a while, probably like a month in or four sets of leaves. Um, but also again, if you start it in like cocoa core or whatever, where there's no nutrients in there, then you may feed it a little bit earlier but always go less. Okay, uh, how many seedlings should I keep in one container? Mm, usually one. Uh, if you're going in a solo cup, you can put a bunch of seeds, but as soon as they sprout, move them out because once they sprout, the roots are straight, it shoots straight down, there's only one strand, it's easy to move. If you wait until they grow massive like I do in most of my previous season because I'm too lazy to separate them then once you separate them you may damage the roots and send them back a little bit <laughs> but it could be done you know um, usually I get lazy I don't separate them but um, one seed uh, one seedling per uh, solar cup is perfect uh, why are my seedlings so tall and lanky um, I think this is probably because they, they sprouted the seeds inside. When your seedlings is super tall, like two to three inches, and it only has two leaves, that's because there's not enough light. Uh, lacking light, the plant usually reach for light, and it, it grows super tall, and it'll be so skinny. So when you see that, that means you're not providing sufficient lighting for your plants to grow nice and strong. Usually it should be only an inch between uh, each uh, set of leaves. But if it's more than that, like your seedling is like this tall and then it only has 
two leaves, <laughs> that's the problem. That's too much. I mean, that's not too much, but it's not enough light. Why are my ceilings dying at the base and falling over? Uh, I think this is uh, dampening off. There's, there's this thing called dampening off. And basically what that means is there's just too much water. It damaged uh, the part where the, 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 the seedling touches the soil and it just breaks over and die. And it just, so that's called dampening off. And the reason for that is just too much water. So again, guys, um, seedlings don't need that much water. Make sure the soil is moistened and not wet. I mean, if you touch the soil and you can see water on your finger, that's just too much. You should not see that. And uh, use soil that can drain easily and also use soft soil. Um, seed starting mix are great, so if you know the, um, you know the amount, you can mix your own. If you don't know the amount, then you can buy it. Uh, seed starting mix already pre-mixed for you. Uh, and then the last one is how often do I water my seedlings? So it's very related, uh, not very often. Um, Give your soil a thorough water each time and then don't water again until um, the soil is semi-dry again. And you can, you can tell because when you lift the cup and it's heavy, that means you have too much water. <laughs> it should be kind of light and fluffy. The soil is kind of fluffy and the, 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 the container is kind of light. So uh, those are important things. Don't water too much. Uh, don't feed your plants too much early. Uh, use soft soil and not soil that are clay type because clay is, uh, you know, the seedlings, the roots can't move easily, so they, they may not grow very fast. And also clay is very heavy because it holds a lot of water also. And it, sometimes it, it, it holds water like a pool and then your, your plants will drown. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope this will help you with uh, starting your seeds for the 2021 um, grow. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.